everybody, Don Brown, back for another episode of Lab Rats here on THP TV. In episode two of Lab Rats, we're going to discuss a variety of topics about golf shafts, materials, and all the things that go into designing the golf shafts that are going into your clubs. One of the more talked about and most misunderstood aspects of golf shafts is carbon fiber and what it is. There's not just one kind of carbon fiber, and you'll hear people throw out things like high modulus, super high modulus, MSI ratings, so we're going to cover that a little bit now. So on my chart here, what I have is a strength versus strain chart. Basically, strength is how strong the carbon fiber is, how much force it will take to break it, and strain is how much that carbon fiber will bend or how far it will stretch before it breaks. What, and so when we have this plot, in engineering, we always plot the stress versus the strain. So I've got a bunch of different fibers on here, and then we also talk about the modulus, and what modulus is is the slope or the angle of this line. So the steeper this line gets, the higher the MSI or the higher the modulus. So we got a couple fibers on here. Over here we have some fibers we've been talking a lot about lately, T800, T1100, and then T700. T700 is kind of what we call our standard modulus carbon fiber. It's got a modulus of 33. If we look at the T800 and T1100, they've got a similar modulus right around 42, but you can see the strength on these fibers keeps getting higher. We're going from about 700, uh, KSI strength here up to almost 1100 here. If we move over to the left a little bit, you'll see some of the other fibers, uh, M46, M60, and over here a 125 MSI fiber. You'll see that these lines are getting steeper, but the other thing you're going to notice is they're getting a lot lower. Basically, these fibers are not as strong as the fibers over here. So while they're stiffer, you'll make a much stiffer golf shaft with them, the golf shaft will be more brittle. Um, you can see the 125 MSI down here. It is extremely stiff. You will make a very, very stiff golf shaft if you were to use nothing but this material in it, but it's going to be very brittle and probably not durable enough for use. So one of the things we do is we mix a lot of these fibers. Even in our T1100, we use the T1100 fiber in mostly the longitudinal length, along the length of the shaft. That's how we define the flex and give the shaft the strength it needs to be durable. We use these type of fibers like M46 or M60 in the 45 degree plies. That's how we get a very low torque shaft. So when we're making a golf shaft, we're trying to blend all these different properties. If we made a shaft with all these fibers down here, we'd have something very stiff, but that very well might break in your hands. If we make something that's all only T700, probably gonna have something that's gonna be a regular flex with a pretty high torque rating. So by blending all these different fibers together, that's how we make a shaft with dialed in properties of torque, stiffness, ball flight, all of those things. So the next thing we're going to talk about is carbon fiber and what prepreg is, because there's a lot of misconceptions about that. So this here is carbon fiber. Doesn't look much different than the hair some of you are lucky enough to have on your head. Like this, it's not of much use to anybody. It's very high tensile strength, but you can see it will flip and flop all over the place. This is prepreg. What prepreg stands for is pre-impregnated carbon fiber. So what they've done at uh, our prepreg company is they've squozen some resin into the carbon fiber. So this piece of material here is about 30% resin, 70% carbon fiber. What that does is when we cure this resin, it becomes hard and it locks these graphite fibers in place, giving us the properties that we all know and love from carbon fiber. What you're looking at here is prepreg on the roll. And looking at these three rolls, you don't probably don't think they're any different. They all look very similar. In fact, that couldn't be more different. This material here is a standard fiber, 33 MSI, 700 tensile strength. So is this one. They look exactly the same. They also look like this roll in the middle, which is actually our T1100 material. This material costs about 10 times what these other two materials do, and it has a fiber that is 42 MSI and almost 1100 KSI in strength. So not only stiffer, but also stronger than the materials on the outside. When you hear a shaft engineer's talk, you hear us talk a lot about flags, but we always don't do a great job of explaining what flags are. We take the prepreg that you saw in the previous segment, and we cut it into different shapes that go onto the shaft. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, different flags that are going into this particular golf shaft. The flags are placed at different locations with different fiber angles, and that's how we control the properties of the shaft. So we talked a little bit in the last segment about the different kind of carbon fibers and where we use them in the shaft. For example, in this shaft, we've got some M40J that we're using here in the 45 plies. That's gonna give us a really low torque. Here in the tip, with the tip flags, we've got some T800. Very strong for durability and also a little bit higher modulus that's gonna help us uh, knock the spin off a little bit. In these long flags here, we're using T700. It's an 85 gram shaft, so we don't need anything too strong because of the weight to control the durability in the mid and the butt section of the shaft. This flag back here is a pretty high FAW or heavy, heavy fiber aerial weight. That means it's a very heavy flag. We're using it back here because it's counterbalanced. We're using a T700 material. It's going to a little bit of extra stiffness at the butt end, but not make the shaft too stiff. 
Another one of the topics that gets brought up a lot on the forum that I wanted to answer some questions about is shaft weight, uh, balance point, swing weighting, back weighting, all those kind of topics on what the effect is on the total club swing weight. So just a quick illustrative example on how the balance point of the shaft can affect the swing weight. Here we have three theoretical shafts, a 45 gram, a 65 gram, and an 85 gram shaft. Most folks would assume that the 45 gram shaft would swing weight much lighter than the 85 gram shaft, but that's all dependent on the balance point. Swing weight is a function of both the weight and the balance point of the shaft. So this 45 gram shaft, if it's got a balance point that's 24 inches from the butt end, but this 85 gram shaft is counterbalanced and has a balance point that's only 19.3 inches from the butt end, they'll end up having the exact same swing weight in the same club, which again seems very counterintuitive when you look at the weight being 40 grams difference. But because we've moved the balance point almost five inches, they end up having the same net swing weight. Conversely here, we've got 65 gram and a 75 gram shaft and the 70, 65 gram shaft uh, balance point is one inch further down the shaft, which ends up actually netting a two swing weight increase on the club. So again, a little bit counterintuitive. Most folks would assume that the 65 gram shaft would swing weight lighter than the 75, and with only an inch change in the balance point, we've actually got a club that will swing weight two points higher. So when you're evaluating the shaft for your next driver, don't just take the weight into account when you're trying to figure out how your swing weights will end up. You've got to take in the balance point into account as well. The next thing we're going to talk about is fiber angle and flag placement in the shaft. If you look at all these different flags here, you can see that these fibers are running at a 45 degree angle to what will be the length of our shaft, whereas these fibers are running in zero degrees along the length. This is the flag that flags that control the torque in the shaft. These are the flags that control the bending and the flex. You'll also see that there are flags placed at different locations. These flags are down here in the tip section. That's how we're going to control our launch and spin. These flags run the full length of the shaft. That's how we're going to control our flex. Then we've got a flag up here at the butt end that we're actually using to stiffen up the butt end and it also contributes some counterbalancing to the shaft by adding extra material to the butt end. So Don, we just took kind of an education classroom setting, perfect example of lab rats, and we learned a lot about materials. Can you tell us, after seeing all the materials and being on the board and talking about the different fibers, how does that go into making a shaft? Because you, you have different shaft lines. Yeah, so I mean, it's really like we talked about, it's about blending the different materials together. Um, there used to be that old BASF commercial, we don't make the products you buy, we make the products you buy better. It's kind of what we're doing. And really, if you were to go kind of look around at all the carbon shaft companies, we're all using more or less the same materials. Um, there's two basically high-end fiber companies in the world that are making the high-end kind of fibers like a T1100 or an M40J. Uh, there's some other suppliers that make kind of standard modules, but when you're looking at the really high-end fibers that we're using in some of the shafts today, there's only two suppliers or three suppliers to get those from. So we're all starting basically from the same point and it's how the different engineers blend those materials together that make the shafts perform better or worse than uh, some of the other shafts out there. And as one of those people who blends those materials together, and as we saw on the board a little bit ago, there's a lot of blending that goes on. It's, for instance, if we take your T1100 hazardous shaft, which everybody's raving about right now, it's not just a long, smooth thing of T1100. Yeah, no, uh, the T1100 shaft has got, I think, five or six different materials that are in there. So, you know, with a lot of these, when people are talking about the fibers that are going in there, sometimes... If you were to really break it down, there's maybe only a tip flag of T1100 in some of these, or just a butt flag of 125 MSI. Sometimes the shaft is made entirely of, you know, a T700 or T800 fiber. So it just depends on the properties you're looking for. Um, obviously, durability is a big thing here. You know, when we're making golf shafts, we like them to stay in one piece. So if we were to use a lot of these really high MSI or high ton materials, um, they're all very brittle. And so you would end up having a shaft that would break. So that's why we have to blend the high MSI fibers that we're using with some higher strength standard modulus or maybe a T800 type fiber. So we have a golf shaft that stays in one piece. Now, right now, you have a lot of different product lines out there. But two that are getting most of the attention, at least on the THP forum and uh, through social media, is Hazardous mm -hmm. and Evenflow. Yep. Now, they use some of the same materials but they're very different shafts. Can you kind of explain what the major differences are from a material standpoint to kind of tie in what we've talked about? Yeah, I mean, the materials that go into those uh, are actually very similar. We're using uh, a lot of almost, you know, we have about 25 different materials that we use here, and that encompasses six different fibers, but you'll find the same fibers. There's M46J in Hazardous, there's M46J in an even flow. There's T800 in both, there's T700. The difference really comes from the flag size. We looked at the different flags that go in there and the flag placement. Uh, another thing that's on there is 
basically the shape of the golf shaft. If you were to look at a hazardous black, it's got a very, very long butt parallel and then a very kind of fat rounded midsection. Uh, an even flow shaft has got a much straighter profile than that. So even though the shafts weigh about the same, have about the same mix of materials that are going to perform and feel very different. Now I have a question for you that a reader sent me after watching the first episode of Lab Rats with Don Brown, and I'd never thought about it before. He asked, why are shafts tapered? Meaning, why is it thicker in the butt section and thinner at the tip? Why is it not the same all the way down? Well, I mean, you could, in theory, have a shaft that was... So you're going to either have to... If you're going to do that, you'd either have to have a grip that was 335, the size that goes in the hosel, or you'd have to have a hosel that would accommodate a 600 diameter Right. What, shaft. For instance, why is the hosel thinner? Uh, I mean, a, a lot of it's just the, the flexibility, you know, uh, going way back to when you were just designing wood shafts w- with wood and then with steel, and you didn't have the flexibility to change moduluses and, and change, you know, have flags or just basically making a stick out of wood and turning that into a golf shaft. If it was 600 diameter like the grip where it joined the, the, the head in wood, you'd have a really, really stiff golf shaft. So a lot of it just comes, I'm assuming, from that. Um, it would also look really weird if you had a 600 diameter shaft going into, uh, into your driver would look a little bit odd. Um, you know, there's uh, some things that have been done. People have done some smaller diameters. Uh, you know, obviously you had the Wilson fat shaft was a popular product for a long time. <clears throat> but even there, that was only maybe 400, 428, I think, was the diameter going into the head. And you did have to do a lot of things in that design that were very different from a standard geometry shaft in terms of uh, where the materials went, what materials were you used. We actually made a lot of those shafts for Wilson, you know, when that was a product line. Let's talk a little bit about Evenflow because it is a new product and it's out on tour and it's getting some pretty good traction yeah. out on tour right away. Yep. Tell us about the shafts and why consumers who let's say they're playing hazardous it may not be the fit but if they aren't playing hazardous they might want to jump in or maybe it's just something that might fit them better yeah <clears throat> even flow excuse me even flow is kind of the yin to the hazardous yang where hazardous is designed for very aggressive swingers people with fast tempos people that don't maybe don't even fit that category but just don't want to feel any lag in the golf shaft hazardous is a really good option especially with the black the red the t1100 very very stiff midsections even flow is kind of the opposite it's got almost a concave EI profile. So the EI profile drops off at kind of a uh, consistent rate through the shaft, makes the shaft Can low. you explain that? I'm going to interrupt you. Can you explain it to those? I know we've talked about EI profile yeah. a lot. Can you explain what exactly that means? EI profile is basically a graph of the stiffness of the shaft from the butt end to the tip end. So, um, you know, with a hazardous shaft, it's actually going to have a pretty straight line in the butt end because it's, butt, it's a parallel butt shaft, and then it's going to drop off from there. And then it's, going, it's got, I would say, some non-continuous places in it where it gets, it's really stiff, and then it starts to soften up, and then it'll get stiff again in the tip section. With even flow, that, uh, the stiffness is a much more consistent drop-off as you go through the length. So uh, it's going to load um, a lot more uniformly along the length of the shaft, whereas the hazardous, you're going to kind of get localized loading with an even flow. It's going to load much more evenly. It's going to feel a lot smoother. Um, maybe not great for people with aggressive tempos because they're going to feel a lot more lag. Um, with all the testing we've done so far, we've had players that it hasn't fit into it, where they you know, said, oh, this isn't spinning the right amount, it's not launching right. We have yet to have anybody say they didn't like how the shaft feels. So that's a, from a feel standpoint, there are people like Graffaloi Blue is a great example. High performance shaft, still being played by, I think he's the number three or four player in the world, the big tall Swede. Um, but most people hated the way that golf shaft felt. Great performance that they would give him, but they just didn't like the way it feels. With even flow, we're kind of, you know, everybody likes the way it feels. The performance may not end up being what you need just because different shafts for different people, but pretty uniformly, everyone has liked the way it felt. By having the two different lines, roughly, as you said, same materials, similar materials, designed a different way, what does the future hold? I mean, we've seen T1100, and you guys brilliantly named a shaft T1100 when a lot of companies use that material. Not necessarily the same way, but use that material. What does the future hold from a material standpoint that you say, man, when this is available or the prices drop to where it can actually be a consumer good, what does the future hold for that for shafts? Well, I mean, you know, with a lot of the new materials, we can do things, you know, T1100 wasn't even out when we made the PXV39. You know, it was the first kind That's of... three years ago? Four years ago. Four, I think. Four kind four of the first ago? sub-40 gram shaft with 
tour style specifications available in the U.S. And you see now there's some shafts coming in from uh, from Japan that are 29 grams and things like that. If you look at some of those, they also have torques that are literally in the almost in the double digits. So you're talking nine, ten degrees of torque. We did the PXV39. We used a lot of T800, and we used some high modulus fiber. We had a shaft that was 39 and a half grams that had a torque right about 50, which for that weight range is, yeah. is very low and pretty stiff. I mean, we had a couple of tour players that used it here and there. So, um, you know, as those more of those materials come out, we can get a lot lighter. I guess the question is, you know, do you need a four degree of torque, 29 gram golf shaft? What's the the market for that? Those really lightweight shafts too are a lot more susceptible to impact damage you know if you've got someone who throws their wedge at the bag they're mad at the wedge they don't realize they just damn and dinged their driver shaft and they may snap on the next swing you know one of the things we don't talk a ton about is the resin but that's actually where something on a lightweight shaft like that there are advancements being made in the resin technology where you can have a more impact resistant shaft so again we're not designing golf shafts to take you know impacts from thrown putters and wedges but it's certainly a nice insurance policy you mentioned lightweight and it's it's a hot topic on the internet because everybody needs heavy. Uh, what are the benefits other than the obvious of well, I think I can probably swing it faster to a light to having a, a lightweight shaft if you can keep the stability the same way? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if it's if it's lighter, you can you can swing it faster. I mean, that's just you know the mass properties uh, of the of the total club. Generally, in very generically lightweight shafts, swing weight lighter. Now, all that, as we discussed, you know, kind of def- depends on where the balance point is in that shaft. But if we're going to make a generic statement, if you had a 45-gram shaft and a 65-gram shaft that had the same balance point, the 45-gram shaft is going to swing weight lighter. Therefore, you build it longer or, you know, you can put more weight in the head. Um, we've seen a lot of folks where when they put more weight in the head, they actually will see an increase in ball speed, even though it's a heavier club head because their swing speed is, they're not swinging as hard as they can every time. So their swing speed is really gonna be the same if you add an extra eight grams to the head because they're swinging the club at the same speed, but that extra mass in the head does generate some extra velocity. Well, we wanna thank you for being part of uh, episode two of Lab Rats, and we have episode three coming up in the near future. Yeah, can't wait.